Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Brother Ron Fox on the second Sunday after Pentecost. For us at Church of the Atonement, it's also a special day in the life of our parish known as Corpus Christi. So a word about that before we begin with morning prayer. <clears throat> in Western tradition, the Thursday after Trinity Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi. It and Trinity Sunday are, as far as I recall, the only holidays that primarily celebrate a doctrine rather than a person or event. In its original and present Roman Catholic setting, Corpus Christi is a celebration of the doctrine of transubstantiation, which is the official Roman Catholic explanation for how the body and blood of Christ is present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. It is often incorrectly assumed that transubstantiation is the same as the doctrine of the corporeal real presence. That is incorrect. The former is an explanation of how the latter works. There are other theological theories that explain the doctrine of the real presence. Anyway, transubstantiation is explicitly ruled out in our formularies. So why would we ever want to celebrate Corpus Christi? Among the particularly high church Anglo-Catholics, there have been a number of movements toward both reviving pre-Reformation tradition and aping the Church of Rome in the present. In just a moment here, I think we have people waiting to get in. Corpus Christi was a major holiday in popular devotion as well as the calendar of the church. And in light of how lax many, perhaps most Protestants, treat Holy Communion, it seemed necessary to some to re-emphasize the holiness of Holy Communion with a restored feast day in its honor. Appropriated into Anglican tradition, one might call it Thanksgiving for the gift of Holy Communion. Another angle of how and why Corpus Christi can be reappropriated in Anglican tradition is the fact that the traditional colic for this holiday was appointed by Thomas Cranmer, to be the colic for Monday Thursday and has remained unchanged ever since. And at today's mass, that colic will be used. As for morning prayer, for those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. Today's Psalms are 56, 57, and 58, beginning on page 662. And the canticles are 16 and 21 on pages 92 and 95. For most of us, the easiest and most accessible way to pray the office is to use the app provided for by my community, the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, which can be found at dailyoffice.app on any of your devices. When you get to dailyoffice.app in the upper right-hand corner, there are three small bars. And when you click on the bars, it'll take you to the options page. You want to ensure you're set for the 30-day Psalter the traditional Lord's Prayer, and the general thanksgiving. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is already lit. If that is your practice, I invite you to do that. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on the second Sunday after Pentecost and the transferred feast at Atonement of Corpus Christi. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 56, 57, and 58, beginning on page 662. Have mercy on me, O God, for my enemies are hounding me. All day long they assault and oppress me. They hound me all the day long. Truly there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. 
in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can flesh do to me? All day long they damage my cause. Their only thought is to do me evil. They band together, they lie in wait. They spy upon my footsteps because they seek my life. Shall they escape despite their wickedness? O God, in your anger, cast down the peoples. You have noted my lamentation, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not recorded in your book? Whenever I call upon you, my enemies will be put to fight, will be put to flight. This I know, for God is on my side. In God the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can mortals do to me? I am bound by the vow I made to you, O God. I will present to you thank offerings. For you have rescued my soul from death and my feet from stumbling. That I may walk before God in the light of the living. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings I will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who maintains my cause. He will send from heaven and save me. He will confound those who trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me, but have fallen into it themselves. Exalt yourselves above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit, awake, Luke, and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Do you indeed decree righteousness, you rulers? Do you judge the peoples with equity? No, you devise evil in your hearts. And your hands deal out violence in the land. The wicked are perverse from the womb. Liars go astray from their birth. They are as venomous as a serpent. They are like the deaf adder which stops its ears, which does not heed the voice of the charmer, no matter how skillful his charming. O God, break their teeth in their mouths. Pull the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. Let them vanish like water that runs off. Let them wither like trodden grass. Let them be like the snail that melts away, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before they bear fruit, let them be cut down like a briar. Like thorns and thistles, let them be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they see the vengeance. They will bathe their feet in the blood of the wicked, and they will and they will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who rules in the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, you know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you passed. 
You have seen their detestable things, the filthy idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold that were among them. It may be that there is among you a man or a woman or a family or tribe whose heart is already turning away from the Lord our God to serve the gods of those nations. It may be that there is among you a root sprouting poisonous and bitter growth. All who hear the words of this oath and bless themselves, thinking in their hearts, we are safe even though we go our own stubborn ways, thus bringing disaster on moist and dry alike. The Lord will be unwilling to pardon them, but the Lord's anger and passion will smoke against them. All the curses written in this book will descend on them, and the Lord will blot out their names from under heaven. The Lord will single them out from all the tribes of Israel for calamity, in accordance with all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the law. The next generation, your children who rise up after you, as well as the foreigner who comes from a distant country, will see the devastation of that land and the afflictions with which the Lord has afflicted it. All its soil burned out by sulfur and salt, nothing planted, nothing sprouting, unable to support any vegetation, like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Admon and Zeboim, which the Lord destroyed in his fierce anger. They, and indeed all the nations, will wonder, why has the Lord done thus to the land? What caused this great display of anger? They will conclude, it is because they abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They turned and served other gods, worshiping them, gods whom they had not known and whom he had not allotted to them. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against that land, bringing on it every curse written in this book. The Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, fury, and great wrath, and cast them into another land, as is now the case. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things belong to us and to our children forever, to observe all the words of this law. Here ends the reading. The Song of Zechariah, Canticle 16, on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, 
Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Here ends the reading. The Te Deum, Canticle 21, on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bow with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer on page 97, and Suffrages B on page 98. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, from whom all good proceeds, Grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request you'd like read out loud, you may put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. In the lower right, you see a little bubble that says chat with everyone. Put your prayer request there. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow.
And during this week of June 11th, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Phyllis, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Maureen, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Father Rosa, Susan T, former President Carter, Mother Gustalise, Mary, Marilyn, Father Bice, Patrick, Jean, Ralph, Lori, Gretchen, Brenda T, Barbara, Deacon Ken, Presiding Bishop Curry, John, Manny, Chris, Pope Francis, Greg, Elvira, and all with COVID-19. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth and Ginger, for all who mourn, for all victims of gun violence, for the unemployed and for those seeking work, for the people of Ukraine, South Sudan, Turkey, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, and Syria, and with thanks for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. For all health care workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state. For all expectant parents. And for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. For members of our military services on active duty, Andre, Ricky, Owen, Mack, Celeste, and Nate. And Nate. <coughs> Excuse me. For Paula, our bishop. Dan, our interim rector, and for the work of our vestry and search committee. For the birthdays of Father Ethan Jewett, Carol Trapp, Father Gary Lawler, Nicholas Chalice, Janine Singleton, Phyllis Robb, Enar Al Nasir, Father Dan Puhala, Antoinette Weatherspoon, and Matthew McGarvey. For the wedding anniversaries of Robert Gabrinsky and Ronald Fotopoulos, Kevin Simcox and Carolyn Neal, Jane and William Lucas, and Cena Lightbold and Charles Stewart. For the diaconal ordination anniversaries of Father Thomas C.H. Scott, Father Ted Durst, Father Gary Lawler, and Father Adam Spencer. And for the priestly ordination anniversaries of Father Spencer and Father Scott Zaucha. And we pray for the departed, remembering Virginia Chandler, a former atonement parishioner, George Winston, all who have died of gun violence, and all who have died of COVID-19. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, <coughs> for Norma Aranda, Denver Charles Davis, Robert Everett Branham, Brent and Marcy Cameron, Richard Blonde, John Jensen, Eleanor Dahmer, John Toman, Father Roy Waywell, and William Lytle. And we offer this prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail. And give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That prayer comes to us from the people of St. Matthew's, Westminster. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on the second Sunday after Pentecost. And as we said at the onset for the Church of the Atonement, the transferred feast of Corpus Christi. The eight o'clock mass is about to wind down. The nine o'clock will begin shortly. And 11 will be a solemn high mass with the uh, choir season coming to a conclusion today. With any luck, we'll 
have a cessation of rain by noon so we can do our procession around the block with the Blessed Sacrament. So we shall see what happens with that. There are plenty of opportunities to worship throughout the week at Atonement. There's a morning Mass on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30. We do evening prayer at 5.30 on Tuesday evening. There's a Mass on Wednesday evening at 6.30. The Thursday Mass is at noon. On Saturday, we have the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10. And, of course, we're here every morning on Google Meet at 8.30 for morning prayer. We hope to see you throughout the week. Rather gloomy, rainy day out there today. We'll see, as we said, to see what happens later on. Have yourselves a great Sunday, everyone. God bless.